Oh boy. Okay. Oh God, what is this? Um, <clears throat> Mini Jane. Call the meeting of the personnel committee of January twenty third, twenty twenty three. Should be uh, to order. Um, first, we don't, do we have anyone for public comment? Staff is not aware of anybody. Okay. So next, we'll have approval of the minutes, and then I'm going to ask for a change in the agenda. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So I'll move to approve. And second, Brian. Second. Any suggested changes or amendments to the minutes? If not, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of approving the minutes of the November 28th meeting. Okay. It's approved. No. Anyone opposed? I abstain. Okay. Um, Ryan has asked that we change the order of things. Uh, he has on under old business, we have under old business, an organization update and he asks that he be able to do that now in order to fit everything into the time. Uh, is there a motion to change the agenda? to allow for old business organization update to come now in the order of the minutes? I move to change the agenda. Second. A second. All in favor? Okay, Ryan, if you wanna go ahead with what Great. you wanted to do here. Well, thank you for that adjustment. I'm sure we'll get through everything anyway, but this is uh, just somewhat time sensitive um, and appreciate you doing that. So um, as the personnel committee knows, like I. Don't recall which meeting it was, but it was a personnel committee meeting, I'll say maybe back in October timeframe, uh, might have been late September. Um, I put on the council's radar that at that point, you know, I was, you know, not quite two years on the job, but coming up on two years on the job. Uh, and, and also at that time, I knew uh, it was, I think, fresh news at the time, um, Holly Schaefer, the, the existing or previous at that time, um, HR director had told me she would be retiring, and so I signaled that it might be a good time, uh, given some observations I'd accumulated uh, during my time here, to uh, give some thought to whether or not there were any uh, adjustments that might be worthwhile to pursue in terms of management, uh, realignment, uh, adjustments and responsibilities, complexion of the management team, et cetera, to basically help meet town needs and, and achieve maximum efficiencies and that sort of thing. Um, and one of the items I, you know, or concepts I tossed out there just to signal something I had been pondering and, and looking at, but hadn't really done a, a great deal of analysis of yet was this idea of uh, going back to or potentially reinstating an assistant town manager, um, which as I think everyone in the council knows, even if you weren't in the council when it was the case for many years, there was a town manager and assistant town manager that, that kind of operated um, in partnership together. Um, but there was feedback that the council provided and there was feedback that department heads provided uh, to me directly in, in department head meetings. Um, that was all very helpful, very constructive. So I understood um, not just the more recent history, which I was aware of, you know, my, my past predecessor and some of the things that went wrong uh, with, with he and his assistant town manager at the time, but also on better understand um, the how, how things worked and, and how well they worked and, and what the staff sort of feedback was during all the years that Matt and Maria were town manager and assistant town manager uh, here in Mansfield. And so um, with, with the benefit of that context and that, that, you know, sort of rich insights, if you will, and my own uh, observations, um, and then Lee coming on board and, and assuming the role of interim HR director uh, once Holly departed, you know, we, we basically put heads together and, and looked at things and, you know, really tried to wrestle with, well, what is the best model? Is it the current model? Um, is it something like what was in, in place when Matt and Maria were here? Is it something different? And so we, we batted about a number of ideas. And ultimately, um, where I have kind of settled is what I genuinely believe would be um, the, the best organizational model from a management perspective moving forward is uh, to, to go about it this way. And that is to not 
uh, stick with the status quo, uh, which has a conventional HR director, but also not go back to an assistant town manager model in the way that Maria was used and human resources, which was essentially just handled by the assistant town manager, uh, but to establish an, a new position, um, a new position um, that uh, is essentially uh, responsible for the constellation of services that we collectively call shared services. Uh, I know the council is gone on the records, very supportive, very proud of the shared services that we have. And by shared services, um, I mean finance, IT and facilities are kind of the big three, but we have two other functions which are quasi shared services or currently behave a little like shared services. And those are uh, human resources and communications. And then the sixth, entity or, or functional area I would point to is public health and Eastern Highlands Health District. So these are these are functions that are largely uh, internal looking. They, they, um, they are internal support services for the most part. Um, they are not public facing services. The one outlier is the Eastern Highlands Health District, but uh, the rest of the services I mentioned, they are part of the the sort of back of the shop, if you will, uh, municipal apparatus, they are not the public facing piece. And so for that reason, I think there's, it makes good administrative sense to consider collectively um, consolidating those under one umbrella so that there's um, maximal collaboration amongst those, those units, uh, but also uh, an individual, um, a manager who is responsible for that constellation, that division um, if you will. Um, and so uh, I, I believe that this is the best model, as I said. Um, Lee has been uh, a very valuable resource for me as I've looked at different options and we pondered different things and we've kind of uh, contemplated the, the, the budgetary impact of it all and, and of course the operational efficiencies of it all. Um, I want to underscore that what is being proposed would not result in the creation of new staff it's sort of a realignment of the existing headcount, if you will. Um, so in lieu of backfilling uh, an HR director, uh, we would be creating this chief of shared services and administration position. Uh, it would be an individual appointed by the, the town manager and reporting to the town manager, um, but would work very much hand in glove with the executive heads of the other entities. Uh, so the school districts, et cetera, um, while there would be, you know, again, line item sort of reporting to the town manager. Um, this is envisioned as, you know, uh, uh, working with our partners very collaboratively. Um, so this position would, um, re would replace the existing HR director um, as the administrative head, so to speak, of human resources. But uh, we also envision uh, under this model, the, the likelihood of elevating one of the town's existing human resource specialists um, into an HR lead or HR manager uh, position. So we have somebody that for all intents and purposes on a day-to-day, -day, what I'll call transactional level, when a department head has an HR related question, when an employee has a benefits question, et cetera, um, they have somebody at a sort of uh, middle manager level, if you will, that they can work with on HR matters. They wouldn't have to go through for all those transactional sort of things, um, this chief of shared services and administration. So uh, chief of shared services and administration, uh, again, would oversee multiple different functional areas that all have that common thread of shared services. Um, I, I believe that there are ways that we can do this that are are you know, if not budget neutral, very close to being budget neutral. And, and one of the things that we're looking at um, in terms of the next or the coming fiscal year, um, ways of achieving you know, or, or reducing any net increase in expense is being able to adjust our, our town labor attorney line. Um, the person in this position would uh, have sort of primary responsibility uh, uh, lead at the table in, in preparing for our labor relations uh, and discussions and, and, and union negotiations. So we would be, in, my vision is that we would be uh, leaning a little less heavily on the assistance and, and services of the town's labor council. We get a great 
you know, great benefit from Ken Weinstock and his firm. But, um, you know, as you can appreciate, uh, billable hours being such as they are, um, it's not an inexpensive proposition to, to work uh, or lean so heavily on, on um, uh, an attorney for those, for those services. And so um, that would be one way to help offset some of the expense is actually uh, what amounts to fewer billable hours um, for those, that labor management function. Um, and we would also uh, look to achieve uh, some offset, at least in next year's budget, um, by uh, taking a hi hiatus, if you will, from the UConn MPA intern program uh, that we funded this year and, and look to, to fund, fund this program. I think this would be you know, sort of a higher and better use of, of those funds, to be, to be frank. So in a nutshell, um, this is what's being proposed. Um, at the conclusion of this meeting, I would like to share with all of you as members of the personnel committee, um, basically give you an opportunity to have an advanced look at um, a working draft. We may be re revising it a little bit and, and your feedback, of course, would be welcome if you'd like to follow up with me. But the materials that I intend to take to the town council um, in February um, at, the, at the next council meeting uh, to basically discuss this uh, in as much or more detail and, and hopefully get the council support for um, establishing this position effective this spring. Um, we have important work that we're trying to do, and there are many advantages, I believe, in expediting the, the bringing online of this position if there's support for it in the spring rather than waiting to the start of the next fiscal year. So, um, you know, really all I want to do is kind of do an introduction to this, um, answer any immediate questions you may have. Um, maybe I should give the floor to Lee, because again, we've been working hand in glove on this, and there may be elements of this that Lee thinks uh, we should touch on that I didn't necessarily hit on. So Lee, is there anything that I left out? No, I, I think you hit all the high points and kind of the, the mental exercise that we've kind of gone through to try to be as um, forward thinking as possible and consistent with the notion that uh, I know is, is an important one, which is to try to enhance the shared services concept. And uh, it is something that obviously I think Mansfield should be proud of and, and kind of stands them apart. And I think other municipalities in Connecticut um, have have looked at at this model and uh, certainly looked at Mansfield uh, and some of the things that you're currently doing and I think looking to enhance. Can I ask a couple of questions and then open it up for others? Uh, specific, would this change our relationship organizationally with our partners, the district, Region 19 and Eastern Highlands, this new position? So I don't see this changing the relationship. I think, you know, going back to what I said and then what Lee kind of just echoed, I I see it to the extent that there's any change, quote unquote change, I think it it elevates shared services. It kind of puts more emphasis on it by saying we 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 think so much of this and the importance of this and we want so much for it to work at the highest level that we're actually dedicating an individual whose primary focus will be kind of on this assemblage. And so from a standpoint of like peer-to-peer -peer interactions, yeah. um, I don't see this replacing the the need for um, a lot of discussions that I have directly, let's say, with the superintendents. Or, if I may, um, at the district, when they have a financial issue, they would still deal with the person who's now in Sherry's position. Correct. So in not a sense, via this new position. Right. So as you can appreciate, without getting into the weeds, yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, the finance director. That's we'll use that as an example. The finance director is appointed by, and presently under the current organizational structure, reports directly to the town manager. Now, that doesn't mean that every time Sherry engages with one of the superintendents or works with things on them that I'm part of every discussion. I, I don't need to be. She works directly with them. And so that wouldn't change under this model either. Um, mm -hmm. There would be all sorts of direct communication, collaboration happening between, say, the finance director, facilities director, IT director with uh, with the respective superintendents in, the, in this example that wouldn't necessitate those conversations to go on halt or pause 
pending the availability of the chief of shared services. And my other small question, then, who would staff this committee? <laughs> well, um, we see right now, it's in the job description that this individual would do that. I think there might be some language in there about, you know, or, you know, because again, I think we're still working through some of the mechanics of the HR manager. Um, mm -hmm. I do see in all likelihood, Ron, my, 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 I hate to say best guess, but I think in all likelihood, this individual that I'm describing would staff the committee. Um, there may be some leeway for that person to, to delegate the responsibility as the needs arise to an HR staff member. Okay. But yeah. Others? Ryan, Terry? Ryan? Ryan? Okay. Yes. Um, Ryan, um, how much is this going to cost the town and it, or the taxpayer? So right now, um, when you look at what we would be paying an HR director, if we essentially just backfilled the position as is uh, versus what we would be paying um, for this position as described, um, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of a $30,000 difference um, in terms of this position uh, versus the HR director position. However, as I described, um, if you backfill the HR director position, depending on who you get, but I think the reality is, you know, based on the salary range for that position and who would likely be interested in it, uh, we would be less likely to get the sort of individual that I alluded to that can help offset, I believe, a lot of the labor attorney costs. Um, and so when you start to factor in the offsets, i.e. the ability to reduce the labor council fees and some of the other things I've described, um, in the first year, which is just the first year, it'll change, you know, presumably over time, uh, we're actually looking at a, at a slight decrease. Um, we think that potentially next year's operating budget might be in the neighborhood of $1,000 less under this scenario versus backfilling the HR director, you know, based on how it all shakes out. Uh, that said, I'm not making the case for this purely on, you know, the, 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 the bean counting exercise of the salary dollars. Um, I, I genuinely believe that it's a better oper operational model. Okay, uh, another question. Um, will this assistant town manager be taking any of your responsibilities uh, from you? So it's not assistant town manager, it's a chief of uh, shared services administration, but this position, um, one of the ways it helps free me up is, so I have 18 direct reports now, which is a very substantial number of direct reports. It would um, remove a small handful of those so that I would basically be provided updates on a, on a shared services level from this individual. So I wouldn't have to be necessarily as, as uh, tied into the day-to-day -day of facilities, IT, finance, et cetera, um, would allow me to focus more time and energy on a number of you know, projects, initiatives of, of strategic importance to the town council. Okay, are you going to be coming back before the uh, personnel committee uh, for a vote on this before you send it to the council uh, in February? I am not. Um, the personnel committee doesn't need to approve this. The council ultimately, because of the budgetary implications, um, you know, especially in the current fiscal year where this position wasn't funded, um, again, even if it's largely offset the way I've described it, um, it would be prudent and appropriate, obviously, for the council to vote on it. Um, my hope is that the personnel committee will support the concept and could share those sentiments uh, with the full uh, council in February. Um, but this, what I'm proposing, um, does not require, again, because we're not increasing the head counts or anything, we're just kind of doing some organizational realignment within sort of existing staffing levels, uh, would not require uh, initial authorization from the personnel committee. Okay. When you have a chance, could we get an organization chart for how this would play out? Sure. Yeah, that can be part of uh, what else what I'll send you after this meeting. Yeah. One more thing. I'm sorry. Um, it would have been helpful, I think, if you summarized and and, and uh, provided uh, in tonight's packet for the personnel committee um, some information before uh, we had this discussion. It's you know uh, I think it's important that we have all the information um, sure. prior to our meeting. Yeah. Well, and and. So I appreciate where you're coming from. And, and we talked about the sequence of some of that. And, and to be honest, the biggest concern I had was 
you know, because obviously once you post a packet, it's a public document. And I wanted to, I wanted to tell the story. I wanted to, I wanted to be the one to be able to tell the story this way and, and not have several days where there's a job description and stuff floating out there without that, that context. So I, I appreciate where you're coming from and I respect that. And, and uh, after this meeting, I'll, I'll share all the backup documentation. Okay. That would be called transparency, you know, in the future. That's, that's what that is. Thank you. Terry. Terry. Um, thanks. Um, Ryan, I think this is a terrific idea uh, and uh, we'll support it. Um, I guess it would be the CSO. Yeah. So we, we, uh, the working acronym, I guess it's the, it's the CASA. So it's the capital C lowercase O S S A. <laughs> So whether it goes by the acronym or it becomes Chief of Shared Services for shorthand or CASA, I don't know. I guess we'll kind of have to let that organically play itself out. What's A? I'm, I wrote operations. It's, oh, so it's Chief of Shared Services and Administration. Ah, okay. Got it. Um, so it sounds smart. Uh, it sounds very reasonable. Uh, I am understanding that there'll no longer be an HR director that that this person um, will will be performing that role. Um, one question I have is sort of, I'm thinking about how difficult it's been to hire and uh, in terms of uh, likelihood of finding somebody with a skill set uh, where they're gonna be able to sit down. It seems such a specialized skill set to be able to sit down and be part of the negotiation for labor contracts. Um, and I'm curious sort of where we're hoping to get such a person or what sort of background they'll have. No, it's a great, great question. I think this is something that, you know, Lee and I have given a lot of thought and, um, you know, you never know for sure. You know, we have a sense of the universe of potential candidates that are out there, people that, you know, we've come across in our own dealings, you know, municipal meetings, statewide or otherwise. Um, and there's some people that come to mind that I think, you know, may have the inclination or the, the interest in the position. Obviously, if they're not interested, then that's a, that's a non-starter too. But, I think as far as who will likely draw from, you know, I, my expectation, Terry, is that, you know, we, there are definitely people that get into municipal management that aspire to be and potentially even serve as, you know, chief executive officer in a municipality that with the benefit of that experience and, you know, a whole variety of, of, you know, reasons, you know, maybe in their own lives, they, they, they realize that what excites them or what they're most drawn to or what their most their aptitude lies is less that public facing piece of, of the leadership and, and they have more interest in the public policy, the operations, back of the shop stuff. And so I think there are a number of people that uh, I, I think you know may be interested in this that are either um, they could be HR directors, they could be finance directors, they could have served as both. They could be assistant town or city managers. They could be town or city managers. There are definitely people out there that I think that, you know, a position like this, given how unique our shared services sort of environment is, um, may be interested in getting out of the lane that they're in and wrapping their arms around this. But uh, the proof will be in the pudding. Um, right. Thank have, you. Have you, uh, Ryan, talked to the superintendents about this? Uh, I've spoken primarily with Peter Dart, superintendent of mm -hmm. public schools. Um, I will be having a conversation with Sharon. I want to get through basically this meeting with the personnel committee. I'm always mindful of, I don't want any, I wouldn't want members of the council to be hearing about this through the grapevine, through others. Um, but I have in confidence had conversations with Peter Dart about how I would anticipate this would interface, you know, with, with the department heads that he works very closely with and, and he's supportive of the concept. Okay. Okay. If there's. Um, Ron? Yes, Tony. I just want to say that um, we know that, that both Derek and Ryan have been somewhat uh, concerned about the number of reports. And uh, when when Derek tried to figure out a way to do this, there was a real uprising among department heads because it looked like certain ones were going to be favored and others weren't. Uh, I think that this configuration does something very different and it won't have that kind of opposition because we're looking at groups of people with a very specific responsibility that goes beyond the town. Um, so, you know, the, the, the departments that would be working with this person uh, already have uh, deep experiences as part of shared services. And 
And by the way, I was thinking maybe the, the appropriate candidate would be somebody who came out of UConn Law with a double master with a law degree and a master's in public administration. There is a program that uh, UConn runs like that, and it might that might pull the right num kinds of people together. Mm. Okay, we look forward to hearing more yeah, as you appreciate the feedback and, and certainly as I push out the materials. Uh, to you all after this meeting. If you have any follow-up questions or feedback, don't hesitate to to let me know. Um, I guess the only other organizational update um, I wanted to touch on was, uh, I'm actually going to yield the floor here to Lee uh, in a minute because he's been the one kind of navigating this through uh, to completion. But um, so we have an assistant town engineer, Derek Delay, um, who as his sort of duties and responsibilities have shifted and grown over time, basically as the demands of the engineering division, so to speak, within DPW have grown, um, the way that, uh, that John Carrington, the DPW director, utilizes him and envisions utilizing him or needing him in the future um, has evolved as well. And so um, basically we, you know, Lee and John got together and, and, and talked about the responsibilities of the position, both in the present time, as well as projected future needs. And the, also the reality that, uh, John is going to be asking for based on need, um, an additional project level engineer within DPW because of all the different projects that, en that engineering is supporting right now. Um, it would essentially create more workload, more direct reports for Derek. And so what's being proposed is to elevate Derek from just simply assistant town engineer um, with his position being in the CSEA professional and technical bargaining unit, actually moving his position out of the union, uh, making it a non-union position, recasting it as assistant director slash assistant town engineer for public works. Um, and with the with the promise, the good faith promise that um, management, i.e., me, uh, will support the create the the funding of a second project level engineer in the public works budget uh, starting next fiscal year. So what that means for the union is they don't lose a position, uh, the position that is currently in the union that's a supervisory position that would migrate out to be non union would be replaced by a second non supervisory engineer position. And so the union. Um, you know, this is where Lee comes in because, again, he's been sort of navigating this through, uh, manning the details, so to speak. Um, but basically, management and, and union representation have reached an agreement on that and just wanted to keep you apprised of that. Lee, is there anything else you want to speak to there? No, just that because it is a, it was, I should say, a bargaining unit position, as you mentioned, within the professional and technical unit, we had to uh, craft an MOU to get the union to agree to allow the position to move out of the union based on the level and complexity of the duties. And so that's really where I came in and helped facilitate that and had it reviewed and approved by the union president, the local president, and also by the service rep from CSEA, SEIU. And so um, again, that clear the way to do this because when a position's in the bargaining unit, as you're probably aware, essentially they own the position. And so the only way you can technically get it out of the union is by either getting them to agree to it or by petitioning the labor board. And so um, fortunately, uh, they understood the need uh, based on uh, the level of that position and the level of responsibility associated with it. And so we were able to work with the union to get that done. Um, a question, I, I, I certainly support the town manager, his prerogative here and the decision seems to make a lot of sense. Is there a need for any kind of council approval for this? No, I mean, obviously, when it comes to next year's budget, the, the the union understands. So this is kind of a two step process process or step one is bringing this position, which is being sort of reclassified from assistant town engineer to assistant DPW director slash town engineer um, 
reflecting additional administrative responsibilities, supervisory responsibilities. So bringing that out of the union, that does not require council really approval at this, at this point. However, the addition of um, another full-time project level engineer, which the union understands it's gonna go through the budget process, management will recommend yeah. it, council may or may not favor it. They understand that there's no guarantee that the council, you know, it, the, the council will make its own determination on that position. Well, I'm just what, what is the what would be the title of the new position, Derek's new position? I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Lee, but it's uh, assistant director of public works slash assistant town engineer. Correct. That's correct. Okay. okay. Looks like Brian has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Brian. I just, I just have a comment about what Tony said about recruitment. Uh, she said that. Um, UConn has a good program, um, and, and they probably do, but uh, we need to cast a wider net. We shouldn't narrow our search to UConn graduates in any way. Uh, I'm looking to cast a wide net in any recruitment of any town employee. My suggestion was really that there is a program that would prepare, prepare a person who might want this job. That's all. And other law schools and Universities do it too, but that was my only point. Um, Ryan, do you have anything else under the heading of organization yeah. update? No, I, I appreciate it. No, that's it. Okay, so maybe we can go back to the uh, agenda. The item of new business, first item, a raise for the registrar of voters and the assistant registrars. If you want to just outline what that is. Yeah, so um, because these are elected officials, um, this is done on a, on a biennial basis um, and, and um, needs, needs to be done, you know, at this point following, you know, the election that, that happened in, in November. So this would um, go into effect, uh, would, would be effective uh, January 1st, 2023, and, and would go into effect for a two-year period expiring December 31st, 2024. Um, you know, it's a two and three quarter general wage increase, which, you know, again, frankly, because it's a two year period and not a one year period, um, this this is a, a, you know, frankly, a conservative increase, I'll call it for the for the registrars, because that level of increase we would typically administer for town employees on an annual basis, especially given the backdrop of current inflation. Um, but this is this is kind of what they've deemed appropriate. Tony? Um, I believe this is the one requirement, the one state requirement that an elected official be paid. There is a requirement that registrars get a stipend or, or an hourly pay. Yeah. Ryan? Yeah, Ryan's right. It's very conservative um, seeing that inflation uh, is anywhere between 6 and 8% at the moment. Um, I just wanted to ask Ryan, how many hours a, a week do they work? I mean, I think it's highly variable depending on, you know, proximity to or in the throes of an election. I would say that, you know, probably at a minimum on average, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of a, of a half-time job, you know, 20 hours um, hovering around there. And then more hours, obviously, they're doing whatever, logging whatever hours they need to during election season. If there's no other comments on this, what would be called for is a motion from us bring it to the council for the Charlie's season. looking to be recognized. I'm sorry, Terry. Oh, I was going to make the motion. Oh, okay. Go ahead, please. Um, no, Charlie wants to be recognized. Oh, I'm sorry. Who, who wishes to be heard? Oh, Charlie's here. Brian, I just asked because I didn't know um, who sets their schedule, the registrars. Is it something that they do themselves or? Yeah, I mean, as elected officials, they have broad kind of they 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 do provide what I'll call regular. You know, if there's a substantive update to be provided to to me in my capacity as town manager, but it's this interesting kind of hybrid, if you will, where you know they have some reporting requirements, so to speak, with the town manager, but they are separately elected by the electorate, and so they are directly accountable to the electorate. So I think our registrars do a good job of keeping. You know, myself and my position abreast of what's going on in their world, but at the end of the day, 
um, you know, they are hired and fired, so to speak, by by the town folk. No, oh, I have to agree. I mean, I, I know they do a wonderful job. I know that a good a majority or a portion of what they do is uh, filtering through and sifting through uh, when the students either graduate or they move out of the dorms and such. And so that becomes uh, quite a problem in particular that um, is how they are able to contact via state law and Yukon rules is how they were able to contact the students. So it's troublesome. It's a difficult process and it's definitely, you know, something that they constantly have to work on. Um, if there are no other comments, Terry, if you want to make your motion. Sure. Move effective January 1st, 2023 to endorse an increase by 2.75% to the hourly rate of pay for the registrars of voters and deputy registrars of voters for the 2023-2024 term. This would set the registrar's compensation at $24.24 per hour and the deputy registrar's compensation at $18.21 per hour. Is there a second? Brian seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, that motion is passed. Um, the next item, uh, there is has there was discussion of the next step in the annual evaluation of the town manager, the 360 evaluation, which I would assume would be something under the purview of this committee. And I just wanted to get a sense of that and how we would proceed in terms of selection of an external entity that would oversee that evaluation as was done in the past. Um, Lee, do you have any comments on that or thought on that? Well, I think I could be helpful with that. And um, I'd be happy to do, to work with you folks on kind of doing a kind of a, a search and evaluation of companies that do that and kind of look at a couple of different options, models. There's lots, lots of ways that a 360 can be done, uh, the types of questions, the type of format. And what, what I was thinking about would be maybe something that would kind of a couple different options that I could bounce off of you that might be uh, a little different to see which which kind um, would be preferable. I think the the problem that I see with a lot of them is they're really kind of canned and and so not that they're not good in their own right, but I, I would think that you want something that might be a little more customizable and more specific to like a Mansfield versus a, I don't know, a Fortune 500 company. Tony, is it your uh, assumption or understanding that this committee would be the one charged with recruitment and, and uh, selection of whatever entity is to oversee this evaluation? Yeah, I mean, you wrote into your rules that this is one of the things you do. Yeah. and. Um, so yes, this is one of the things you do. I, I continue to believe that we could do this ourselves without hiring outside consultants, but no, nobody agrees with me on this. So we've done it in the past. Constructing an instrument is not, a, it's not a, uh, doesn't require rocket science. And I just, it pains me to have to pay, to pay somebody for something that we can do ourselves, but you're the one my, my, my sense having done the council evaluation last time was that was a hell of a job itself and the idea of going beyond that to the others who would participate would be something that at least i would not be have the appetite for or the energy for and well, can i just maybe throw something else in there um and and I, I sh the the concern that I would have, and again, I'm obviously looking at this more from an HR perspective, and that is I'm used to working in the state municipal kind of merit system at the state level, 
anytime you're looking at any kind of device of this nature, um, it's, it's typically been validated. You want to have a reliable and validated instrument. And the concern I think I would have about us doing it ourselves is that, you know, it would it would cost us a fortune to try to validate such an instrument to make sure that there wasn't some kind of adverse impact or that the questions weren't somehow biased or slanted. So um, that would be the concern. Tony, that I would have in this day and age where, um, you know, again, I, I think that uh, companies that do this type of work uh, do have to spend a lot of money just to have whatever instrument they're using validated. Otherwise, they can't use it legally. Uh, on the other hand, you're saying that we can't use a cookie cutter, which means that we're gonna to have to make choices about what we want asked, in which case we end up writing the thing ourselves anyway. But I mean, I understand Ron's concern. And um, since I did this whole thing myself last, and not the last time, but in the past, I, you know, I, uh, I have this, this belief. Actually, I ran a, um, a, a uh, Center for Social Research and learned quite a bit about writing questionnaires. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, that's where I'm coming from. But, you know, you're the committee that has to do it. So um, I'm not going to tell you what to do. So we'll, we'll proceed with that and have more discussion of that at our next meeting, if that's all right. Um, quickly, I just wanted to get a sense of uh, how the four-day work is working out. Oh, Brian, I'm sorry. I, I'm a supporter of anonymity uh, on anybody's yeah. evaluation. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, is Ryan still with us? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, four day week, working out well? Yeah. Um, I mean, we're, we're just a couple weeks in, so it's still early. Um, you know, feedback on the street, so to speak, or in the hall, I guess I should say, from employees is that, you know, I think, you know, people are getting used to, you know, this, this, the new ebb and flow, the slightly longer days when they're working, but have now had a couple weeks where they, you know, they had the extra day off on, on Friday. And I heard some scuttlebutt about some people enjoying that and that that part of the reason, right? That's part of the rationale was that work life balance. Um, I checked with Margaret uh, earlier because she, I believe her email address or email account is one of the ones that's set up to get um, the automated alerts when um, when there is a citizen uh, feedback submitted versus via the online survey instrument that we set up. And I don't believe we've had any uh, comments submitted yet, but we will, uh, I talked to her earlier today about let's let's make sure we put that back out there rebroadcast it, so to speak, on social media and other places, just kind of keep reminding people that we're doing it and, and that we want that, their feedback. Okay. Any questions or thoughts on that? All right. The last item, uh, yet another stab on the revised charge to the personnel committee, which appears in your packet. And I would say if anyone has any ideas for men, I've used up all my brain cells on this one. So if anyone has any ideas, wants to make any changes, maybe. Uh, if you can think of it now, go ahead, but better to just send them to me and I'll integrate it into something. But my hope is that we put this on the agenda for the February 13th council meeting. Ron, you're saying we would meet one more time to talk about it before we would go, but what you're hoping well, to do is make give you comments before. Yeah. Our next meeting. Well, actually, I was thinking we would not meet one more time if we do want to meet one more time before we proceed then instead of going to the council on February 13th, it would go to the council two weeks after that. I, I would think that would be the better way to go. Okay. We actually, as a group, make a decision to make okay. the recommendation uh, rather than uh, see it cold that day. Okay. But so I'm yeah, happy to you. take a look at it. Um, can I make a, a request? And I might, might be missing something, but our packet is not... So the we have the agenda is in the per, is 
on the um, website, but the actual packet isn't. And yeah, I just I that right before the start of this meeting when I actually went to print the packet. So I'm not sure why for this one, the, the, the full packet wasn't posted on the I, in that section of the website. Um, I, we'll make sure that that's done moving forward. Somehow yeah. I got mine. I don't know whether. Well, the packet was emailed out. So yeah. here we've gotten, it's just a matter of the, we tend to post the agenda as a standalone uh, link and then also a meeting packet kind of right next to it when you go to the section of the website that's agendas and minutes. And so we'll just have to make sure moving forward that the full packet, you know, because uh, that's certainly our intent is to post that um, the week prior to the meeting. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate that. That just makes it super easy, much easier to find things. Yeah. Uh, but Ron, I'm happy to take a look at this uh, okay. and make content comments for our next meeting. Thank you. Um, tonight, when we have the committee reports, uh, in the normal course of things, I would make reference to the organization update that you've given us, unless, Ryan, you feel so, that that's... Yeah, my report, um, I'm not going to obviously get into the details uh, along the lines of what I did tonight, but I will probably say, just because I include reference to it in my written report, that uh, let, you know, kind of foreshadow the conversation I'm looking to have with the council next month. Okay. Okay, is there any other business before us? Is there a motion to adjourn? Second, all in favor? So I'll see you all in about 15 minutes. I'll see you all virtually from a different town meeting. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you.